it's stitch stop and roll time this is a brand new afghan designed by me just for you and this is a comprehensive tutorial on learning how to do everything when it comes to making this afghan Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Stitch Stop and Roll Afghan. This is a design by me just for you and we're going to be covering everything that you need to know in order to do this particular afghan. Everything from the main hexagon motif just like so. We're going to do a half hexagon just like this. We're going to be doing the joining and then the final border and that's all coming up today. So let's go over some of the elements to this particular afghan and let's get started. First of all, let's cover the pattern. So we have a free pattern available on yarnspirations.com and in late 2015 we were selling kits that have all the colors that are available because we have five different color palettes. The first one is Boldly Urban, Refreshing Soda, Peaceful Meadow, Enchanting Grove, and Calm Ocean Breeze. And you can see all the color breakdowns in order to make those but of course for a crochet along you can also substitute your colors if you wish to do something completely different. We will be using a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and the instructions are all written just like so. Now according to what I heard from yarnspirations.com this is one of the largest patterns, patterns that they have produced in a long time and there's a lot of instructions here but of course one thing that I love about yarnspirations.com is that they provide a lot of diagrams when needed and so you can see that this is one diagram for the main motif the hexagon and because you don't see it finishing down over here that's just because this is a repeat pattern going all the way around and then of course we also have the half hexagon just like this and we're going to be covering all of the elements in order to do this. So it's going to be uh, quite interesting as we go through and of course on the back part of the pattern you can see all the different color ways that you would like as well as the abbreviations for everything that you need that's within inside this pattern. Without further ado let's get started. We're going to start off into the middle of these. Now if you are doing this particular example what I would recommend to you is that we do all of the same stuff at the same time. So for example you're gonna do all the green here if you're doing green and I would do all the motifs that you need to do at the same time. Then come back and then do the next layer and do all of the motifs at the same time and then come and keep doing that. It's a quicker way to do a pattern like this because you remember the stitches that you did and it makes it a lot easier. So all of your motifs will end up at the same same size at the same time because you're going to work at it like an assembly line and that's the quickest way to do an afghan such as this. So let's begin. We're going to be using natural. This is color A when we look at it. So color A and uh, you'll notice that with A that means color. So we're going to start off with a slip knot using a five millimeter size H crochet hook for the whole thing. And let's put that onto the hook and we're making, we're starting off with one of the motifs. So it says to chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. Insert your hook into the beginning chain and then yarn over it and pull through just like this. And this is your very starting ring. What I wanted to do with the straggler just wrap it around the ring when you go to do the next layer and then you can hide that in and then you don't need to worry about that after that. Let's move on to officially round number one. Start on round number one by chaining three. One, two and three and I want you to put 17 double crochets into the center of this ring. That's why the ring is so big and two double crochets just wrap the hook going into the ring. Wrap it, pull through, pull through two and two. So just a reminder, so wrap and in, pull through, pull through two and two. So remember that the chaining three counts as one of the double crochets in the rules of crochet. So there should be a total of 18 of these posts going all the way around the ring. So please do that. So you'll have to chain, uh, have 18 of these posts going all the way around. So you'll have one chain three and 17 double crochets in order to make up your 18. Please do that and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm running out of space in the ring. It's no big deal. Just shift everything. You can just grab onto it and it will pull and expose more ring and then once we get onto the next layer it'll kind of pull itself all back so it's equal. Just like so. So what I want you to do is that I want you to count the number of posts going around. So just kind of open them up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. I need a total of 18. So I'm gonna double crochet one more time and I want to join to the very beginning chain three to start with just like this and I wanna fasten off. So I'm gonna show you how to fasten off only one time in this video and that'll be right now and just trim your yarn and pull it through the loop 
to lock it. And what I would really recommend at this point is that you need this layer to be nicely um, done. So if you start weaving on top of that layer it's going to look like a mess because we're doing a lot of texture work in this particular afghan. So just uh, quickly just grab a, a darning needle and just put it inside to the fibers. Okay, just underneath so it doesn't poke out on the top part of the of the row. And just going in one once and then just inserting your needle into a different part but very close to it. So it goes into a different set of fibers for two and coming in again third way. So your project can never stretch in three directions at one time. So this would be how you'd finish it. And so you got a nice layer on the top and all you just can do at this point is that you can just trim it right down. Also the one that you were bearing in the very front uh, first time is that you can trim that one as well. Get that out of the way. And what I would recommend at this point is that you need a total of nine motifs to do this. So this is one. So do eight more of these just like this and then come back and then, then let's go on to round number two. Let's begin round number two and this is what you have and hopefully you have all nine of them done for you now and you're ready for this layer. So we're going to start off with a slip knot. It's the way I like to join and we're going to insert it onto the hook. So what we have to do this time is that this layer is going to fold up and basically jump off the off the afghan and face you. So in order to do this when we go to join we want to join exactly where we did the slip stitch. Okay so we want it just the very first one right there and we want to come in from behind and this is called the back post double crochet that we're going to be doing for this whole layer. But we come in from the back and we pop it back out. So we only have the post. So we're not touching anything on the top of the regular stitches. So don't grab the straggler itself. Just let that fall out and just grab the yarn leading to the ball pull through and through. And we want to chain two. This does not count as one of the stitches for this particular afghan. Okay so don't count this as one. Now every one of these posts are now going to get two double crochets our back post double crochet. So we wrap the hook first going into the same post from the back side. So we just come in from the back. Okay comes out through the front and then push it out to the back. So it's only that. And I wanna take this straggler and lay it down over top. So it gets stuck into position and we double crochet as normal. And we have to do that one more time because that chaining of two does not count as one of the stitches. Okay so it's two back post double crochet per post. So once that first one is done you can see that it kind of pulls that up and this will uh, come towards you. So you just move to the next one. So out from the back to the front pop it. Okay so you only have that post and double crochet. And please put in two back post double crochet for every post. And now there's a total of 18 posts going around and if you put in two for one you'll notice that it, that ends up with being a count of 36 back post double crochets by the time you end up going all the way around this layer. So please do that. Two back post double crochet onto each post going all the way around. I'm coming up all the way back around and I can tell I only have one stitch left because when I look at the post from the inside here I can tell I only have one left. So just have to do two back post double crochet all the way around including the last one. And now when we go to do the slip stitch to finalize this round we don't want to slip stitch it to the first chain two. We want to slip stitch to the top of the first back post double crochet. This chain two is just a builder and if you do it to the first back or to the first chain two you're gonna end up with the odd count number. So just gotta make sure. I would recommend too that you just kinda open this up and look and make sure you did not skip any posts because it'll be very obvious when, if you do that and you leave it and you don't realize it until afterward. So just uh, fasten off this just exactly the way I showed you to do the white with your darning needle to do a nice clean finish and then we'll move up to round number three together. Let's move up to round number three. So round number three is a really simple round. We're just going to do one single crochet into each stitch. So again I'm going to move over to color number color uh, C and this is grass and I want to join it to exactly where I started. So we want to make sure that we're just getting on the top of um, of a stitch. Okay so no longer doing the back posts at this time. And I want to just wrap the yarn around to, to fasten on. Okay and we need to chain one and single crochet into the same join. And I want to go completely around this to every stitch getting one 
single crochet. Look what I'm doing with the straggler. I'm just trapping it into position as I go all the way around. So it's just underneath. You'll never see it and it's just every stitch is getting one single crochet. So please do that and this concludes round number three but do not fasten this color off. We're gonna go for round number four using this exact same color and so if you're doing this in the, the um, assembly method um, you wanna do these two um, rounds at the same time uh, for every one of them and then it just makes it a lot simpler because you don't need to fasten off more than you have to. So please do this for round number three. So I'm coming up all the way back around and number three didn't take very long and getting into every stitch going around. And what I want to do is just join it to the top of the first or to the first single crochet. Okay and then just hold. Okay so we're gonna move up to round number four. Do not fasten off at this time. Continue to do this and then what you're gonna do is to finish off round number four and then you'll do all of your motifs for three and four at the same time. So let's begin round number four. So round number four we want to uh, establish our corners of the hexagon. So we have to start doing this at this point and so we're going to uh, work on some back posts on this but we're also gonna start doing our corners at the same time. So what we're going to do is that we're going to chain one and see this is the first uh, single crochet. This is the second and so forth and what we need to do from the back we need to pop it out just right underneath just getting that single crochet post first and then just coming back out the other side so it's around the back. Okay and this is a back post um, that we're working on and we pull through and through. So we're slip stitching. Okay so now we have to chain three. So one, two, three. So what we're going to do then is for the next five back uh, single crochets we're gonna come in from the back so we wrap the hook first. It's a back post double crochet and we just go to the next one. Now every one of the sides has a total of six back post double crochets. So the first one of chaining a three counts as one of them so that's why it says only to do um, back post double crochet in the next five because the chaining that we did counts as one of them. Okay, so you should be able to count the number of posts. So one, two, three, four, five. That's not enough. We need a total of six as I promised. And then we are going to do this. So we're gonna establish our very first corner and the corners are just chaining a four. One, two, three, and four. And coming immediately to the next single crochet. So there's no jumping over of any of the single crochets at this point. And we come into the next one and we do a back post double crochet for the next six of them. So that was one two, three, this is four, five and six and then we chain four again. Okay so you can see the sides are starting to take place. So one, two, three and four and again just starting on the immediately the next one and go another six and keep doing that and you will have a total of six sides and I'll see you back here at the end of this re revolution as we go all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I wanna do make sure that I have my six um, back post double crochet is into place and then we're going to finish off with a chaining of four. One, two, three, four and just slip stitch this then into the top of the beginning chain three. And I want you to fasten off this yarn and I want you to do then if you're doing the assembly method like I suggested so you're gonna do rounds three and four like this and then we'll move on to round number five together. So please fasten this off and get ready for round number five. So let's begin on round number five. So round number five we are going to use uh, five and six are the same color. So it doesn't matter any one of these chain four spaces will do. I'm gonna start on the first one just because I can. So we're going to start off with a slip knot and that's the way I like to join it. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to go into any one of these chain four spaces. It doesn't matter which one. It is completely hexagonal at this point. Just grab one only and just fasten like so and chain two. This does not count as a stitch this chain two. And what we want to do then is then half double crochet into the chain four space five times. So one, two, three, four and five. 
and this one is a really easy round. So every one of these stitches all the way around are going to get one half double crochet each except for the chain four spaces. There's gonna be five half double crochets into each one of those. So just one half into each one of the stitches. I'll just get you to the first corner. Okay and I'm now out of stitches. So here's my next corner and there will be five in that corner and we just keep rotating around the same fashion. It's just half double crochet into each one of the stitches with the corners having five as well. Okay, so continue to do that. Meet you back at the start in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I've just finished my half double crochets before this. Now remember that we did a chaining up of two first and then there's five half double crochets. Make sure you join to the first half double crochet and not to the chain two. That'll throw your stitches out of count. Please do not fasten off this yarn at this time. Uh, we wanna keep this uh, color going. One more revolution. Round number six, we're gonna start exactly where we are at this point but the corner is actually right here with my thumb or with my uh, middle finger is and we're going to start off here first and then get eventually then do our corner and then continue to do all the way around. I'm gonna take this uh, one step by step slowly and hopefully you can catch on at that point. To begin this revolution what we need to do is that we need to chain one first and we need to slip stitch around the first post of the half double crochet working from the front to the back. Okay, so we're gonna come in from the front down. So don't, this is the chain two here. Don't get that one, get the next one. And we're going from the front to the back and we just want to be able to come around and just pull through and through. So this will keep, that. that'll make that turn into a front post um, situation. We're going to chain two. Okay, and this chain two does not count as any stitch. So around this one plus the next one we're going to do front post uh, double crochet. So double crochet front post. So just wrap coming in from the front side, pop it back out and we want to double crochet that one and we want to do that again to the next one. So from the front side, pop it back out just like this. So we're going to then do the corner. So the next one, the third one is the corner and uh, what we need to do is coming around is that we need to do three double crochet back posts around that. So just coming from the back side this time. So back, coming back to the front and then back out to the back and we want, that's a double crochet back post and we want to do that a total of three times. And this is your very corner that we're going to be uh, doing at this moment. Okay, so we started off, we did two front post uh, double crochets. Now we have three back post double crochets. So every one of these are identical as we go all the way around but let me continue to go around slowly so that you can follow along. So as you get the corner done, what we're going to do is move to the next two. The next two are going to be front post double crochet. And that makes sense because that's how we started on this side, right? That's front post double crochet over here. So it's gonna be front post double crochet on the other side. And those are gonna be two in a row. The next two in a row are going to be back post double crochet. So I, I kept it as easy as possible uh, so that you're not just doing crazy stunts. Now the next one is kinda crazy so let me uh, show you what you need to do with that one. So the next two stitches are kind of unusual and I did it for a layering effect and they are front post trebles. Okay, so these are kind of neat. So we're going to do two of them. So we wrap the hook twice. Now this time instead of going to the layer right below, you're going to go one more down and you're gonna come in from the front and go two posts across, wrap the yarn, pull through and then wrap and pull through two and two and two and I want you to do that one more time. So wrap twice, same section going through the two, pull through, pull through two and two like this. And now we're going to continue the patterning as we had been before. Do you see that these are back posts here? Well the next two are gonna be back posts double crochets. I'm going to review another side of this if I'm not, if you're not catching on. So that there's gonna be two back posts double crochets in a row and then the next two are going to be front post double crochets and then we're back onto a corner. So let me show you again on how to do one side. So the middle one of the five is going to be three 
back post double crochet. So one, coming into the same one again for two, same one again for three. It's back post double crochet. Now the next two are going to be front post double crochet. Okay, so coming in from the front, the next two are going to be back post double crochet and we are in the middle of a side again. So we have to do that fancy footwork one more time. Okay, so we have, you're in the middle of the six, so the two middle ones so we're gonna wrap twice, come down to the green section, grab in front of two front post trebles, these, that's what these are and you wanna do two of them into the same spot. Okay, the next two are going to be back post double crochet. Okay, the next two are going to be front post double crochet and then you're back on a corner again which is gonna be three back post double crochet again and restart another size. So this is what's creating the texture really interestingly on the on the front side. So continue to do that same patterning going all the way around and I'll meet you back here at the beginning and we'll fasten off and then move up to another row. So I'm coming up all the way back around. Remember that we did not start off in the corner exactly. We started off doing the two front post double um, crochets. So then that means that we're not finishing off in a corner and that makes a big difference because on this round we are not ending up on a corner but all the rest of the rounds that we do for the remainder of this uh, particular motif we always start off in a corner. So I'm just uh, finishing off doing the final side here. And these are front post trebles. You will notice that this round gave it a lot of texture. So it's kind of neat how one layer can really drastically affect um, how it looks. And that's kind of a neat thing about this whole afghan. So you're gonna finish off and do your two back post double crochets. And when we go to finish off this round, it says that we are going to uh, finish off with um, a slip stitch to the first front post double crochet that we started off with just like this. So please fasten this off. So if you're doing this in uh, rounds, so rounds five and six are the same color, we're gonna move on to round number seven next. So please fasten this off and let's get ready for that round. Let's begin the next color. This is round number seven. So we're gonna bring in aqua and I'm still following the colors for the boldly urban. So what I want you to do is that I want you to look for any corner and look for the middle one of the back post double crochet. Do you see it? Okay, there it is right there. So I, I saw all the rest of them I'm just indicating to you. It doesn't matter which one you choose at this point. So we're just gonna join. So we're just gonna join it and then chain three which counts as a double crochet this time around and we want to double crochet two more times into that same one. Noticing that I'm keeping the straggler on top of the line so I can bury it as I go. So every one of these stitches going all the way to the next corner we'll have one double crochet each and on the corners the middle one of the back post double crochet will have three double crochets and going all the way, uh, going uh, three double crochets and you continue in that same fashion and going all the way around. Now I've buried that long enough, I'm just gonna let that fall out of the way and then I just continue to go. I'll just get you to the first corner. So it's pretty straightforward in this round. Uh, when I designed this I decided to make it kind of uh, complex sometimes and then give you some easy rounds uh, in order to give you a fair balance of easy to uh, more complex stuff. So this is the first one of the three back post double crochets. So the middle one is next and that'll be three double crochets in there. So and so then I can turn the corner and then you just continue along one single, one double crochet all the way across and then the next corner will have three. So please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around on round number seven and it's important that you make sure that you have the right stitch count. So there was 12 double crochets in between the corner pieces. Okay, so there's three here and then there's 12 and then there's another three for a corner. So once you get this uh, all the way back around, you just want to slip st uh, stitch to the top of the beginning chain three and then fasten that off. So that color is done so do all of your other motifs at this point. So this is what it's looking like at this point. See how the, color for the colors are playing with each other? It's kind of neat. So fasten that off and let's move on to round number eight. 
Let's move along to round a number eight. And so this is the orange. This is what makes it boldly urban. So we have it and you want to join to the middle one of any one of the three. It doesn't matter. It's a, that's the three double crochets. But when we want to go join, when we want to go join it, we want to come in from a back post again and coming in from the back side, popping it back out to the back. Okay, do not grab both strands. Only grab the one and pull through and through. And we need to chain two, one, and two and this does not count as one of the stitches. So what we have to do is one back post double crochet into each one of these all the way around. So coming into that same one because that does not count. So just coming into the same post and trap that straggler into position in the back side. Okay, so just kind of wrap it over that. So it traps it in. The trick is is to trap that straggler as much as you can. So here's the deal with this one. If you notice that it's kind of looking like it's growing a little bit too quickly. Well I designed it in a way that this round is really quite simple. There is no growing in this round at all. So we're just gonna do a back post, a double crochet around each one of the posts going all the way around. So even on the corners we don't worry about it. Just one back post double crochet around. And what this is doing is it's allowing it to catch back up for growing properly and that's kind of why I designed it like that. Okay, so you're gonna end up with these beautiful pumpkin lines right in the center of the blue and it's what makes it really neat. So please do that. Back post, double crochet into each stitch going all the way around. Don't worry about any corners, just one back post, double crochet all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I want to finish off and you can tell I've got one left anyway because you can see that the orange or the pumpkin has popped through. So we're just gonna do the la last back post double crochet and what I want to do is that I wanna make sure that the, remember the first one that we did was a chain two. I want to ignore that and just go to the top of the first back post double crochet with a slip stitch. Do not fasten off this color. We're gonna use it one more time and this next uh, round we have to pay attention to counts at this point and I'm gonna show you and tell you why. So we're gonna immediately start on round number nine. So number nine here is that because we have not really got any corners anymore because we did one back post, back post double crochet around each, we've kind of lost this corner. So what I want you to do at this point, this is the only time, well there's gonna be a few times, but I would recommend that you really count out your stitches this time around and so that you can stay in balance. If you're off by one, it's gonna make a difference down the road and then you'll be pretty upset with yourself. So we're gonna start off by chaining of three, one, two, and three, and this counts as a double crochet and we wanna double crochet into the same spot as the slip stitch uh, two more times. So you have a total of three double crochets because a chain in three counts. So what it's gonna be is that we want to do 14 double crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14. So I have my 14 here and what I want you to notice, see how you got the three here? Okay, the middle one should be the next one up. So if you look at this pumpkin, just follow it straight up. Look, see that's the, that's the next corner. But if you are confused at any point, I'd recommend that you count out that 14 or you could strategically just look up from that middle one here in the blue and you'll know that. And what you have to do is put in three double crochets at that point and then restart count 14. But if you're confident in your counts, just look for the next blue of the three and then just follow that middle one up and it's right here. So there should be, let's just check that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. See where I'm holding? That was the next corner and that's number 15. So please do that. Same thing going all the way around. When you come up all the way back around, I do have my 14 in and the next one is the next corner. So we just want to join to the top of the beginning chain three. So we're gonna move up to row, round number nine after this. But what I want you to do is that I don't want you to do this because it's not saying to do this in the pattern. And that's because it's a personal preference for me and I'm gonna show you a cheating technique in order for you to keep your rounds being consistent. 
So we have all these rounds done and this finishes off round number nine. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna do the roll part. So it's called stitch, stop and roll for a reason because the next parts we're gonna create the roll. But what I want you to do at this point is that we need to know where these corners are eventually down the road as, as we get to row number 13. So we're only on row number nine at this moment. But what I want you to do is get the middle one and just come from the back side, okay, come to the forward and I want you to grab a spare piece of yarn about yay long and pull through that post and just pull the yarn through. And you are marking which corner this is. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, okay that doesn't seem like that's a big deal. It eventually does make a big deal because your counts can be wrong at the end but if you know exactly where this corner is, once you do the roll part it's not always obvious. So I'm just marking it now so that I can refer to it later without having to bust any brain cells. And I would do this for all of your motifs for doing the next part of this tutorial. So please mark all of the corner ones. There's only a total of six and you'll save yourself a lot of aggravation down the road and I'll show you why when we get to that point. So you gotta put some trust in me folks. Not just a pretty face. And please just mark them all. So let's begin round number 10. So let's start, start off with a slip knot first. So this is where it gets really interesting. This is when we start creating the roll effect and I should pull up a sample just to show you. So you'll see here that it's a raised lip like so and so we're gonna start doing the roll feature first and then these two layers that you see here are done afterward. Okay so this basically it's gonna roll up, across and then back down the other side. So we're gonna start this first. Now the reason why I did not have you put the stitch marker in the stitch up here is that in this round we're gonna play with the front loop only. So if you don't know what a front loop is, every stitch is made up of two strings and so the front string is the front loop, the back string is a back loop and then both of them are one stitch. So what I want you to do is at any one of the corners and you can see it here that it's marked, I want you to come into a front loop only and just just not grab both strands, just grab one and I want you to chain up three. So one, two, three and this is a front loop double crochet. Okay this is what it's asking you for to, to do. So you're gonna come into each one of the front loops as a double crochet. As I start you're noticing, see the straggler? I'm just going around it. See so it traps it into position and I wanna do a front po uh, front loop double crochet into each one of the stitches. What's gonna happen on the corner? Absolutely nothing. You're gonna go completely around this whole thing. Every stitch is getting one and that's why I had you mark this because it's easy to lose track on where you are in this project in order to do the roll effect at the end. So please uh, continue to do this front loop double crochet all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I am doing front loop double crochet and I'm at a loops and I'm at the first one. So I'm gonna join with the top of the beginning chain three. So you'll notice that this wanted to fold up towards you and this is the right thing because we want it to fold up to create that ring. Let's move along to round number 11 and 11 what we're going to do. So if you look at it and I get my prototype back here. So we have the lift that has been done here and so now we're gonna go straight across. So ignore these two colors right now. We're gonna go straight across and then down. So let's do that next. Let's begin the next round which is number 11. We're gonna immediately chain two. It does not count as a stitch and what we want to do is back post double crochet each one of the stitches going all the way around. So we're not doing any corners so worrying about that and what this is gonna do is that in the long term it's going to cause this rim to stand up straight. Okay so it's gonna cause this to kind of bend over. So it's gonna lean up and then bend straight across and that's what we want. So we're gonna do one back post double crochet into each one of these going all the way around and then we're going to join it with a slip stitch to the beginning and I'll see you back there in just a moment. Okay and completing off round number 11 going into the back post double crochet for each one of the, the ones that were in the white here and then we're just going to slip stitch to the top of the back post uh, PM at the last stitch. Okay. So we're going to slip stitch to the back post. So we actually, uh, what it says here, says slip stitch around the back post of the first uh, double crochet. So we don't go into an actual stitch on the top. We go to the back post. 
okay, to slip stitch. And that makes sense because what we want to do is we wanna maintain the look of this as we go all the way around. Let's move up to round number 12. Let's move up to round number 12. It's the last time we're gonna be using this uh, particular color for this roll part of this. So right now when you put it down is that you have the roll coming up. You have it coming straight across. Now the colors that are in the middle are not done until rounds number 18 and 19. You will look in the diagram and you do not see rounds number 19 or 18 and 19 very clearly but they're there representing by dots in round number 11 if you look at the diagram. So we're gonna be doing all of that work at the very end. And that's why you're not being asked to do that now. So we're gonna start off by just uh, for round number 12, chain two does not count as a stitch and we're going to go into the same back post that you just uh, joined to uh, in order to maintain that particular pattern. Okay, so it's the same one and it's gonna be one stitch all the way around is one back post double crochet again and this is the last time you'll be doing that and so this is the the layer coming down on the other side of the of the roll. Okay, so you have the roll coming up straight across and then this is the one on the other side of it. So please do that all the way around. One back post, double crochet. So I'm coming up all the way back around again, back post, double crochet and I'm going to finish off using this color at this time and I want to slip stitch then to the beginning back post, double crochet that we started with. Okay, so that concludes off using that color and so you can see the lip has now been created and, and the next round is the fun round. I actually really like the fun round. So um, let's fasten this color off and let's uh, get on with it and let's have a good time in the next round. So let's begin to do the fun round. I'm joining my navy back on as per the boldly urban and this time what we're gonna do is that we're going to create and seal this roll. So this is the, we've already stitched, we stopped, we did the roll and now it's time to uh, make the roll permanent. So what I want you to do is turn it upside down, okay, and I want you just to fold the roll back, okay, so it's kind of, it wants to anyway, but uh, just kind of look here, okay, look where you have a stitch marker, it doesn't matter, anyone will do as far as the corner and just get close to matching up the stitch. Okay, so just kind of roll it and you can kind of match it up to the other side. So what I want you to do is insert your hook in to what you think is matching. So I'm gonna just double check that. It's just a rough guess. Okay, and I'm looking for the, where this one is here. It's just a rough guess because even if you're off by one, it doesn't matter. So these loops that you're seeing here is the back post of the rounds in rounds number 12. So in number 12, we went on the front loops only to create this rim. The, the ones that are left here are the back loops and I want you to insert your hook into a back loop. Okay, so what I want you to do is just grab the strand going to the yarn string only leave this one out and just fasten on. So just attach chain one and going back into that same configuration of the same uh, single crochet and the back loop and just leave this straggler down on top so you can trap it in. So it's one single crochet in. So this whole round is about sealing the deal. So we move to the next single crochet available to you and then we look at the back one and we move to the next loop here. Okay, it's the, it's the back loop of round number 12. And you just wanna keep doing and single crocheting and moving it and this is going to lock it permanently into position. Okay, so you're just kinda matching. So even if it's off by one, or even possibly two, it really doesn't matter too much because the reality is, is that you have the same amount of stitches going around. It may look like it's kind of spiraling a little bit but nobody's really gonna be able to tell that if you're off by that much. Okay, so it's just a rough guess when you fold. So what's happening here is that this rim at this point then is being sealed and the new part that we're gonna start with will be in the navy here and this will be permanently locked in position. So please do that all the way around going into the front going uh, single crochet, locking it into round number 12 in the back loop in order to keep it going. Okay, so please do that all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. You can see I'm sealing in the deal. It looks great. Now if your counts are proper, I have three left on the front side and I have three back loops left on the other side here when I'm going to go straight through. 
Okay, so then it just, if you're off by one, just kind of fake it in there. I wouldn't frog everything just because you're off by one. Okay, and then we're just gonna join with the beginning single crochet. I think that's what it says. Yep, it does. And we're just gonna join just like this and now you can see that the rim is permanently going to sit. It doesn't sit up completely when it doesn't have the middle section done and that's why I kind of did that afterward as well. So let's move on to round number 14. Let's begin round number 14. We're gonna keep the same yarn color one more time and we're going to start off with the chaining of five. Now chaining of five counts as a double crochet plus chain two and this is going to be the one side of the corner so that we're gonna start off with. So one, two, three, four, and five and we're going to double crochet back into that same space. So this is creating a space as a corner. The instructions say to do 16 double crochets and then the next one will have the same corner which will be a double crochet, chain two and double crochet. But remember ha I had you do these cheating techniques of putting these in here. These are at the 17 stitch mark. So there will be 16 here and if you look at it, the 17th will be right where you've marked it, okay? If not, then just adjust. But these are why I had you put it in, just to verify that you are on the right track because it makes a difference when you're going to put these all together. So let me just uh, begin. So I have my double, cro my chain five that I started with and double crochet which represents a corner. So the next 16 are going to be one double crochet each. So I'm gonna count out loud. So this is number two. 3, this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So I have my 16 double crochets in a row just like you see here. But look, if I turn it over, look the next one, see how it's lining up is the 17th one and is the new corner. Okay, so it lines up. So that's why I did that for myself. It just makes it easier and to verify. So it's a double crochet, chain two, double crochet into the same one. So please do that all the way around. So there will be 16 and then the next one will be uh, double crochet, chain two, double crochet for another corner and continue in that same fashion going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. My counts are in check naturally without me having to fake nothing. And so I want to join to the third chain up. Okay, when I go for a slip stitch and I think it says that in the instructions. Um, there we go, yep it does. Third chain of the five and that allows you to keep your gap of the double crochet, chain two, double crochet on the corner. Please fasten this off and we're going to go for uh, some more rounds of the pumpkin next and we're almost done this motif at this moment. You can also uh, pull out your um, stitch markers if you want to. Um, we figured out what those are for and uh, we're done with those so you can pull those out if you wanna clean up your work at this time. So please uh, fasten off and let's get ready for round number 15. Let's move along to round number 15. So 15 is really straightforward. It's just single crochet stuff. So we're just gonna go to any corner. It doesn't matter which one. It's a chain two space and we're going to start off and doing half the corner and then when we come back around we're gonna finish that corner. So it's not doing a whole corner at, this for at the same time. So we're just going to just uh, fasten on and I'm only gonna use the yarn leading to the ball. I'll leave the straggler down. Chain one and what I want to do is that I wanna put three single crochets in there. So each one of these corners actually has five. So when I go to come back around, I'm gonna have to put the other two in the same corner to complete it. So every stitch going all the way around will have one um, single crochet except for the corners. There will be five and it's a nice easy round for you. It's a no brainer and uh, just continue to do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So remember that these chain uh, spaces, chain two, will have five single crochets in each one as you pass by. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm single crocheting into each stitch as I said. Now we started off with three single crochets in the first corner so that we have to finish it off with two 
single crochets and then we slip stitch to the first single crochet that we started with and that puts us right back in the center so then we can start the next round. We're gonna keep this color on for one more. Let's take another spin around the block uh, with this color for round number 16. Round number 16 is pretty straightforward. We're going to chain up three and we're gonna put two more double crochets into the same space or same stitch. Okay and that's the very corner and every stitch going all the way around is going to get one double crochet. So the exception is, is that on the corners, so the, there's groups of five that go, that make up a corner. The middle one of the five, which is the third one in, will have three double crochets to maintain the corner as you're going all the way around. So please one double crochet in each stitch all the way around corners, the middle one of the five is gonna get three double crochets so you can keep that corner being consistent. Let's continue to do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. We just have one more round to go. Coming up all the way back around and we are going to end off just before the corner. Just like so. Okay, so the corner has three double crochets and we're just gonna join with the top of the beginning, uh, the top of the beginning chain three. So we're going to just have to watch this next uh, starting. It's the last round to go. Just fasten this off and let's uh, just join the next yarn and let's finish off this motif. So we're getting close to finishing. I just have to do one more round and it's a free, very three dimensional looking pretty awesome. So let's uh, begin the final round now. So let's just join our last yarn up and this is the aqua. We didn't use a lot of aqua. That's why there was only one ball required in the boldly urban. So we wanna come to the corner and we wanna come to the very middle one and we want to join the yarn. Do not join, or not, do not wrap this straggler. Just leave it out and just join chain one and single crochet into the same one. So when, so the tip is for this is that every corner, so the middle one of the three is gonna have two single crochets. So we're only doing one at this time and then we're gonna start and then when we come back we have to finish off by doing one single crochet in the last. So every stitch around is going to have one single crochet in it except for the very corner, it's the middle one of the three, is going to have two single crochets. That's it. That's it. It's as hard as it gets on this thing. It's the last revolution and um, I'll see you back here in just a moment. So don't forget that corner one, the middle one of the three should have two single crochets and everybody else just gets one. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I wanna make sure that I put in an extra single crochet in the last, sorry not in the last one but in the very final one that we started with okay. So it was a chain one, one single crochet. We have to finish off with the single crochet and then just join it to the beginning single crochet. So that makes it having two in there like it does all the rest of them. So that concludes on how to make this motif like this but now we still have eye candy okay. There, we're still missing some stuff right here. Two rounds, you'll see these as rounds number 18 and 19. I'm Gonna show you how to quickly do those and those are really just the icing on the cake. Let's begin round number 18. So 18 is actually on the diagram. You just gotta look very closely. It's showing in row uh, round number 11. There's two dots that appear on the, the back post a double crochet and those are 11 or 18 and 19 for a row. So what we want to do is that we want to just grab our yarn. So we're gonna do green in this instance. It says to join C which in this case it's the grass and what I want to do is that I wanna just go on the top. So we have it coming up, we have it coming across and then back down the other side and what I wanna do is that I want to just go around the outside of this. So I want to go into a post okay just like this and I wanna wrap the yarn around. Okay so just wrap the yarn and fasten on and what I want to do is that I wanna continue to um, do a slip stitch around each one of these posts. So I'm just gonna move myself along to the next one. Okay and I'm just gonna leave this straggler down on top so I can kinda bury it and I want to do a slip stitch. Now when you do slip stitches make sure that you are giving yourself a little bit of slack um, because it, it, they can get really tight when you do them way too tight. So just let's do this and, and it says to push these down toward the base and what that means at this point is that um, when I go to finish this I'm gonna put another layer which is the next layer all the way around. Okay so it just uh, makes a lot of sense. So I will join you back. So just slip stitching around these posts 
on the top of the ring that you have. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I wanna do a slip stitch to the beginning slip stitch. Now I wanna leave a little bit of a generous tail because I want to be able to weave these in ends in nicely with the darning needle. Um, there's really no better way to do it other than the darning needle but you know you've gone to so much effort so why would you wanna cheat the system now right? So we're just going to just go around like this, lock it and then I'm gonna grab a darning needle and then just fasten in these ends and we're gonna go one more time around using another color and this color will be B. In my case it's a clay and we're gonna go right on top of this. So if you look at the outside of the motif, the clay one is gonna sit right directly beside this in this ring. Okay, so let's go one more time. So we have now the next color which will be color B and I wanna start off with a slip knot. And this is going to go in the ring as well. You'll notice that the ring just got stronger by adding in this uh, last one which is round number 18. So going pretty much into the same spot that you did the join. I'm looking for it. Okay, it's right here. And what I want to do is just kind of go right above it. Okay, so you want to just kind of push everything down. Okay, making sure that you're just going right above it. And then you're just gonna go on the same post. Okay, and just join in your yarn like so and then we just move to the next post and then just single uh, slip stitch your way around just like you did with the green. Okay, and you just wanna make sure that everything stays in balance. Now because you are putting in two here, your trick is is that you don't want to accidentally grab any of these posts that are in behind. Okay, this is just meant for this post that's in the top. And this will then conclude this um, ring going all the way around. Let me meet you back up here. This is the last revolution of these rings and uh, for the large motif just like this and then we're gonna move on to the half, um, to the half um, motifs after that. When you get all the way back around just slip stitch to the beginning slip stitch that you started with and then just do a great job on weaving in your ends and finishing off properly. And this concludes then how to do this particular part and we're gonna move on to doing the half motif next and uh, you can see it comes along pretty nicely. You'll notice that because you've done the two slip stitching lines around the top of the ring that this is a lot more steady and secure and uh, this is looking pretty good. So just weave this in and in the next part of this tutorial we'll start the half hexagons next. So let's begin to do the half motif next. We're gonna review the diagram and instructions and then we're gonna get on with doing this. This is what it looks like on the front and this is what it looks like on the back. I will be explaining to you in the diagram that this pattern is kind of unusual in the sense that every time we start we're always starting on one side and then ending on the other. So we're never going around in a complete circle obviously. But we can never ever turn our work when we have a project uh, sorry have a row where it has to move up one line. So there's green here being used in two lines. We have to finish off green and then three start here and bring green back just like so. So we can never just turn around and do the green going back in the other direction. The reason for that is that when you look at the main Afghan motif just like so, we just worked on the front side the whole time. So if you ever turn your work here and you do the green and turn and do the green in this direction, what it's gonna do is gonna make it appear upside down. So every other row would appear to be the wrong side instead of the right side. Therefore it will have a completely different appearance and that will, therefore it will not work when it comes to this particular pattern. For the diagram format you're going to notice that all of the numbers appear on one side. So what's gonna happen on here? Remember Candid Camera when they used to push the typewriter um, head all the way back and it would go bing and come back. That's what you need to do on this thing. The reason for it is that because we've gone in a continuous circle all the way around this thing, if you turn this over and do the back side of your motif in one direction, what's gonna happen is it's not gonna look the same because all of the right side is facing up in this particular example here. So if you turn it around and come back in the other direction, you're going to have half of your motif that looks like it's upside down in comparison to the larger motif. So whenever we go to start and stop, we always start here with the numbers and then we always finish over here and then we fasten off and then we re begin or begin again and start and going in this direction. Just like I would 
did with the major motifs that we did here. Uh, do this like an assembly line. So you only need to do three. So just get your three done quickly and just keep going and then just uh, just do it step by step and then it's a lot more easier to handle. It's exactly what you see here but it's only in a half and we'll be, be getting that right after this. So let's begin. We are going to match exactly the identical colorway so that this whole afghan looks like it's consistent. So the colors that you see in line with the ones that you've already done in the main motif are exactly the same. It's just the only difference is, is that it's a half. So let's grab our yarn to start with and we're going to create a slip knot and we're going to insert that on the hook and now let's begin. Not. So let's begin. We are going to simply just start with the chaining and we're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And what I want you to do is insert your hook into the beginning chain, yarn over and pull through to form the ring just like you would have on the main motif itself. Row number one begins. So we're going to start off with chaining a three and that counts as a double crochet in the rules of crochet. And inside the center of the ring you want to put eight double crochets. So let's count those out together. So one, two, and we got three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And what I want to do is that I want to count. So the first one of the chaining of three counts as one double crochet as I mentioned. So there should be a total of nine of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You'll look, see the instructions that says you'll end up with nine double crochets and that's true. So what we want to do is that we want to fasten off this and we're going to do it like we did with the main motif. Just simply trim your yarn and we want to hide in some of these uh, really good. Okay so we're going to be fastening on and off uh, throughout this whole thing and what I want you to do is that just put a darning needle uh, through your uh, with your yarn there and in this case we're going in the next one we're going to have um, use back posts. So if I go to weave it into the back post then it's going to be showing so I want to use a darning needle and just go underneath a little bit and just kind of weave it into the fibers and if you go in three different directions one, two, and three um, it forces it to hold it and you don't have to worry about any knots. So you have a nice clean look each and every time and again go in three times to three different areas that are close to where you are and then you can safely just trim off your yarn that's coming out just like so and we can trim off our starting yarn as well. So you have a nice clean area to start. Let's move up to row number two. So let's begin to do row number two. So we're going to start off with a slip knot first. And we need to bring up our work and we need to always start. So if you're ever looking at it, it's always going to start from the front side. So you can always usually tell what is front and what's back. So we're going to start on the very first one. It's the chain three. Okay. And we're going to join on our yarn. We are then going to chain two. This does not count as a stitch and it says. So we're going to do two half double crochets into that same stitch. So the chaining of two does not count as anything. It's just there. It's just a builder. And now for the remainder until the very last stitch is that every other, uh, every post then is going to be a back post double crochet. And there will be two into each one of those as you're going all the way over to the other side. So the starting is a little bit different than how you did the main motif and the reason for it is that because it is a half that it has to start differently. So just a one or sorry two back post double crochet into each. Let me get you to the other side and I'll meet you over there. On the very last one what you're going to do is that right in the top uh, main stitch you're going to put two half double crochets in and then you're going to fasten this off and just use your weaving techniques and use a darning needle if you wish and that's what it would look like at this point. So that's what you need to do. Let's move up to row, uh, row number three. Let's start round number three. Very easy. We're bringing back green and we are going to go into the top of the first back post double crochet. Now we did a chaining of two. You're not worrying about that. You only should see two or uh, two back post double crochets. We're going to come into the very first one 
and we want to just wrap our yarn around. Let the straggler fall down out of, out of position and just join and then chain one and then one single crochet into that same stitch and then using this straggler just leave it on top of the line so it buries in and you wanna do one single crochet into each stitch going all the way to the other side. When you get to the other side what I need you to do is fasten off this color but we're going to bring, bring it back for the next. Why do you have to fasten off if you're using the same color? Because we always have to start off on the one side. We can never go back in the other direction to turn our project because then you'll have a, a row that appears upside down and does not match the main motif that we're doing. So please fasten this off then and then meet me back at the beginning of this over here and I will get you started on the next round or the next row. Begin row number four. So I've already got my yarn on the hook and what I want to do is that I want to not start off in the top of this. I want to start off in a post. So I'm just gonna come in from the back side and come into the very first post instead of coming from the top. And I want to wrap my yarn around that. Okay and now I want to chain uh, uh, five. So one, two, three, four and five and that counts as a double crochet plus a chain two. So I wanna manipulate this straggler so it's over here so I can bury it into the project. So I want to do a back post double crochet into the exact same post that I was just at. So just coming from the ba back side just to keep it to the back. Okay and now I want to do a back post double crochet for another five. So there's going to be just like on the main motif there's going to be a total of six of these back post double crochets in a row before we turn the corner. So this is creating the, the turn in the hexagon corner. So that was one of five. This is two. This is three. Four and five. So with the one that we started off with already in the first one, okay, when we did it, okay, so we have our chain five here. Here's our first one. So we have a total of six. Now we're going to chain four, one, two, three, and four. And starting on the very next single crochet that's available to you, you want to back post double crochet for another six in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you wanna chain four again. So one, two, three, and four. And coming uh, to the remainder you should have a total of six left. So we're gonna do a back post double crochet for the remainder. So one, two, three, this is four, five, and six is the last one that is available to us. Okay, and then what we need to do is chain two, one and two, and then back post double crochet again on the very end. On the very end we'll like this. So your key element here is that you have to make sure all sides have six back post double crochets followed by your chain uh, four and that's how you would do this. So let's move on and let's complete row, row number five. Let's start our next color and this is row number five. So we're going to join to the first chain two space. Okay and it's right here and we just wanna go right into the space itself and we want to wrap the around the space and chain two. This chain two does not count as any stitch at all. So now we have to half double crochet three times into that same space. This uh, row is, goes really quickly by the way. So there's a total of three. So each one of the back post double crochets that you have, you have a total of six here, uh, will each also have a half double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Let me try number six one more time. And we have now a chain four space. There's gonna be five half double crochets in there. So one, two, 
three, four, and five. And now the next six will all have half double crochets. The next chain four space will have five and then you'll uh, do the same thing. Let me uh, get you to the end here just continuing along in the same fashion and I'll show you what to do in the very end of this row. So I'm coming up to the end of this row. I'm half double crocheting into each one of the back post double crochets that we had done. And remember there's gonna be six. So at the very end you have the chain two space there's gonna be three half double crochets in that same space like we had started in the very beginning. And now I wanna fasten this off and I'll meet you back at the start. We're gonna use the same color one more time. Let's begin the next row. So the next row we're gonna create some texture like we did on the main one. And we wanna come in to the first half double crochet. So remember we have our chain two there. We don't worry about that. Just come into the first half double crochet. And we are going to chain two. So one and two. So what we're going to do on the very first half double crochet, remember this is the chain two. We don't worry about it. And we're gonna do a back post double crochet twice around that same post. And using that straggler we just wanna kinda trap it into position so we can cut it later without worry about it falling out. So one and two. So this a, a row is quite simple. So the next, and you just gotta manipulate things if you cannot see it. The next ones are going to be two uh, front post double crochets. One and two. And the next two will be then back post double crochets. One and two. When I designed this I kept them in groups of two. So we're right now directly in the middle of a side and it's just like we did on the main one. So we're gonna do a front post a treble around two of these posts in the green here and we're gonna wrap our hook twice and then go behind the two and just front post treble and do that twice. Now we're going to come to the next uh, two posts that are available to you and we are going to do back post double crochet for those. So one and two. The next two are gonna be front post double crochets and then that will take you directly to the middle of the corner. Okay, so there's groups of uh, five in the corner. So the middle one is going to get three back post double crochets into the same one. So one, two, and three. So let me do another side for you. Okay, and so let's start again. So the next two are gonna be front post double crochets. So one, and two. The next two will be back post double crochets. So one and two and we have our ones right in the middle which are next. Those are two around the same two posts for front post trebles. So one and two and then coming back up to the blue the next two are back post double crochets. One and two. Okay, the next two are front post double crochets. So that was one and two and now you're on a very corner again and so then that's three back posts double crochets around the same one. So one, two, and three. Okay, so let's just do the final side. We're here and we might as well do it together. So the next two are going to be front post trebles. So one and two. The next two are back post treble or double crochets, sorry. The last two are double crochets. I think I th said trebles. I'm not quite sure but I think I did. So remember it's all double crochets here. Now the middle one right in the is the next front post trebles and they're coming right down in the green. So wrap the hook and get those two. Try that 
last one again. And what we want to do then is that we're gonna, the next two are back post double crochets. Okay, the next two are front post treble crochets. And then the last stitch that's available to you will be two back post double crochets. So just go around the post and just do two of those. And then what we want to do is then just weave this in and uh, finish this off and I'll start you back on the other side once again as we move up to another row. So please weave off and uh, I'll see you back here and we'll start at the very beginning again. So let's begin row number seven. So let's be and start that with their hook. And we're gonna come to the very first one right here and we're gonna come into the very first back post double crochet that we had started with. And what we want to do is just uh, wrap the yarn around and join on. And we want to chain three. One, two, three. This time it counts as a double crochet and we wanna double crochet one more time. Leave the straggler down on top of the line so that you can hide it in. And what I want you to do is that every stitch across until we get to the next corner. So how do you know the corner? So there's gonna be three back post uh, double crochets here. The middle one of the three is a corner. And in that corner we're gonna put three double crochets. So just one double crochet all the way until you get to that corner. It's pretty simple. So I, I'm not really counting but I think it did say um, to, it was 12 stitch, stitches away. But I'm more concerned about looking for that corner. Um, of course the counts make sense but that's what I look for when it comes to doing this to kind of speed myself up. I'm pretty confident in my numbers and I'm looking every time I'm finishing a row to make sure everything looks like it makes sense. So I'm almost at a corner. So I can see there's one here. This is not the corner. It's the next one. So it's the next one's gonna get three double crochets. So one, two, and three. And then I start off with one double crochet in each until the next corner where I'm gonna put in three and then I come and come into the end and I'll meet you there. I'm coming up near to the end of the row and in the very final stitch we're only gonna put in two double crochets into the same stitch to keep it in balance. So when it's a full size corner like you have over here it's three but only on the edge on this side over here. And we kinda did that on the on the front side to the very beginning of this row. There's only two um, double crochets into the first one. So there's gonna be two in the final here. I want you to weave, uh, sorry, fasten this off and weave in your ends and let's go back to the start again and let's do row number eight. Let's start row number eight. So I've already put it onto my hook and I'm gonna come into the very top of the um, double or the chain three that we started with before and I wanna leave this out, the straggler out and I want to just fasten on and I'm going to chain two. And that kind of counts as a half double crochet and it makes sense down the road. So what I want to do is in every stitch on this row, we're not gonna add any stitches but every one of the back post double crochet are gonna be back post double crochets. So there's really no fancy footwork here. So I'm gonna do this all the way to the very um, end of the row. So one back post double crochet into each and I'll show you what to do at the very end. Um, don't assume that it's a back post double crochet at the end because it's not. So and I'll show you to how to do that one at the end. So I'll meet me over there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around and I'm still doing my back post double crochets. I didn't add anything, it's just one each. On the very last stitch I said not to do that. The reason for it is that we're gonna do one half double crochet right in the top of the regular stitch for that very last one. Okay, so now I want you to fasten that off and I'll beat you back at the start. We're gonna use this color once again. So let's start our next row. This is row number nine. Now nine is the last one before we start the roll process which is why it's called stitch, stop, and roll. So we wanna come into the very top of the first um, chain two that we had started with on the other side and we want to just join on to the yarn like so. 
and we're going to chain three, one, two, and three, and we're going to put in um, one double crochet. So as per the instructions, it says to, for us to count. So it says one double crochet in the next 14. So we're gonna count these out this time around and there's a reason for it and I'll explain that to you in a moment. So let's start. So one, two, three, and four. This is five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And what I want you to notice here is that the next one is going to be the middle. So if you look at the blue, you see how there's three together? Here is the middle one. If you follow that straight up, it's the middle one right there. That one I want you to put in three double crochets. So one, two, and three. Okay, so now we're going to start the next part here. So it says for the next uh, 14, that we're going to uh, do it again and we're gonna come to the next corner over here. So what I want you to do is count out your 14 and you can also just verify by looking at the blue and then just continue to the end and I'll meet you at the end at that moment. So I'm coming up all the way around and the 14th is my next one but I still have one more stitch to go and that all will put two double crochets in the very final. So what I want you to do is that I want you to weave in your ends and when I come back I'm gonna show you a tip on how to keep the edges because we're gonna start the roll process next and I did this for the main motif if you've been following all the way along. So in the main motif I had you put in some stitch markers so that you could see the roll process and what I want you to do, I want you to turn it over and I want you to look for the three center. If it helps you to see it on this side first, you can do so. And there is the three in the first corner. And what I want you to do is just put your hook in behind the post only. Do not go into an actual stitch and grab some spare yarn and just create a stitch marker around that so you can identify that later after you do the roll. So do this with both of the, the corners. Okay, you can obviously tell where these corners are here in the end. But so you only want, need to do it right in the two middles. Um, the other one that we did the main motif if you remember we had to do six of these. And so we're ready then and you can see where this is gonna be and let's begin the roll process and let's start that next. So we're introducing our white next and we're going to begin and I need you to create a slip knot and we are going to do um, front loop double crochet. So if you know in stitches the two strings are counted as a stitch. The front string is called a loop. That's the front loop and the back string furthest away from you is the back loop. For this particular exercise what we need to do is that we have to go to the top of the chain three to begin. And let's fasten on our product and let's create chain three. One, two, for this particular one what we have to do is that we have to go in the front loop only and we're going to double crochet. We're not gonna add any to the corner at all. This is why I had you mark it because you will lose the corner in this whole roll process. But I want you to just go on the front loops only as a regular double crochet. And the back uh, loops we're gonna come back to in several rounds from now and being able to secure this so that you have the raised roll within your project. So within this uh, particular row, please just do front loop um, double crochets all the way around and don't add any in the corners, just continue to do one in each. In the very final, just add one double crochet right into the very last stitch. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. Continuing all the way around the, of this, the row, and we're just front loop double crochet right to the end and what we want to do on the very end we are going to do um, one front loop double crochet. So we're gonna fasten this off and we're gonna go back to the start and the next uh, row is slightly different from what we just did and I'll explain that in just a moment. So let's create a slip knot and let's begin this next row. So we wanna come into the very top of the chain three and we wanna just affix it. So we're just gonna come around 
and chain two does not count as a stitch and we're going to do a half double crochet into that same stitch. So the rest of this that we're going to do is that it's gonna be a back post double crochet around each one of the posts going all the way around and that is gonna create the top of the of the roll and it's gonna create it so that it wants to bend over and flatten off on the top. So in this one, every one of the stitches are gonna be back post double crochet and when we get to the very end, what we're going to do is that we're going to put um, a half double crochet into the very last stitch. And please do that for this entire row. So I'm coming up all the way to the other side and then on the very last one is just one half double crochet into the final. So fasten that off, we're gonna do this row one more time and this will be row number um, 12 that we're going to be doing and um, you're gonna see that the roll is really kind of coming along nicely. So we've done the front coming up, we've done the flat and now we gotta do the one coming down on the back side. Fasten this off and I'll meet you back on the other side. So let's start the next row. This is row number 12. So we're gonna start off exactly the way that we started off in the very beginning and we're going to just join to the top of the first half double crochet that we did. Just join and then chain two, one and two. That does not count as a stitch and then just do a half double crochet. So this one again the whole uh, way around we are going to do one uh, back post double crochet into each one of these going all the way around or going all the way to the other side. So this is pretty easy. Um, let's do this and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. You will fasten that off. I don't need to show you that you've already done it before and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So we're at the point of row number 13 and we're gonna uh, fix the roll. So this is what it looks like at this moment and we're gonna create the roll so that it stands up on the motif just like we did on the big one. So what we're going to do at this, uh, it's just like before, we're gonna create a slip knot and what I want you to do is that I need you to roll this back. So we're gonna start off in the very beginning. Okay, so remember the first one has a chain two. We just wanna start on the first half double crochet. And what I want to do is that I wanna look back here and get to the very first one so it's easier to follow this one. And I want you then is just to come to the very first one. Now all of these, see these strings here? They're all back loops from that and I believe that is from round number 12. Okay, so you just have to slide in and we're going to affix everything into position as we go. So we're just gonna fasten on, chain one, single crochet into that same one going across. So we just move down in this one and then we just come back to the next loop that's available to you. Just look for it. And if you're off by one, it's really not a big, it's not a deal breaker. It really does get hidden and you just wanna keep matching them as you go. So just single crochet using the, the the stitch from the white and then the back loop from round number 12 and this is going to make that ridge stand up perfectly. So please do that for this entire row and then I need you to fasten off and I will join you back again and I'll show you what to do next. Let's begin our next row and we're keeping on the blue. And what we need to do for this one is that we need to establish the new corner. Okay, so where I've got the stitch markers here, that's what helped us before. But we can just uh, count just to verify as well. So we're going to join on to the very first single crochet that you had started with before. And I want you to join on and let's do that first. And then chain three, one, two, and three. And then just do another double crochet into that same spot. Okay. So what we need to do is that we need to double crochet into each stitch of the next 16. So let's count those together. So one, two, three, four, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, it's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. 
So it says right where we're about to go next is that we have to then put in a double crochet followed by chain two. So one double crochet, chain two and one double crochet. Okay and so when you look at it it's lined up to the back here. So we know that I'm on the right stitch. So we can actually pull that out. So it just kind of gives you verification. It uh, makes you feel better. So again it's another 16 and then a double crochet, chain two, double crochet and then finish off at the end. I'll meet you here at the end in just a moment. So I'm coming, coming up near the end and I've actually been counting and it's gonna work out perfectly. Um, 16 is the next stitch and then the next one is then the outside stitch and there will be two double crochets then in the final. Just like so. So let's uh, just uh, fasten this off and I'll meet you back at the start on the other side once again. So let's begin row number 15. So we're almost getting done so just so uh, we're almost there. So keep on going and we are going to start off in the first double or the first chain three that we had started with before. And let's uh, put everything together and fasten on chain one and I need you to do two single crochets into that same space. So this uh, row is very easy. So each one of the stitches as we go across are gonna be having one single crochet until we get to the corner. And then in the corner what I need you to do is that you're going to put in five single crochets right into a corner. And that'll allow you to turn your corner. Okay so that's pretty easy. Uh, just one single crochet all the way across and then in the chain two put in five and then keep that same thing going all the way around. Meet you at, at uh, then I want you to meet me at the end of this and I'll show you how to finish and then we'll continue along. We're almost done so just stick with it. So I'm up on the other side and when you get there the last double crochet will have two single crochets inside. So please fasten that off and we'll keep this color again going for the next one but just fasten off and we'll get ready for the next round. Let's keep on going. Let's go for row number 16. So let's go. So we're gonna come into the very first one and there's two single crochets in the first one just so you know but this is the first single crochet of the two. And let's join on our yarn and let's chain three. One, two and three and this counts as a double crochet plus we're gonna do one more which is really quite simple. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna do one double crochet into each except for the corner. So the corner, let me just uh, speed you there first. So the corner has five single crochets. So the middle one of the five is gonna get three double crochets and that's gonna happen on both of the corners. And then the very end uh, one over here you're gonna have two double crochets to finish off. So I want you to do all that, fasten off and then we just have one more row to go and that concludes how to do this motif. So it's just one double crochet in each going all the way and then in the corners the middle one of the five is gonna get three double crochets and then the final stitch of the entire row will have two double crochets. And fasten that off and I'll meet you back and let's do the last round together. Okay so let's do the final round together. We still have to do the tops by the way of these, these pieces in here. It's really quite easy though. So let's uh, begin and we are going to start off and just quickly do this. So we're gonna start off on the top of the first chain three that we started with. Let's just join everything on. So what we're going to do in the corners uh, this time around is that the middle one of the three, let me just get this started and then I'll explain, chain one and then we're gonna do one single crochet in there. So we're just gonna do one single crochet across but in the corner the, the middle one of the three is gonna get two single crochets so it can do the turn properly. So just do one single crochet in each going all the way and then the middle one of the three in the corners just put in uh, two single crochets and then just go all the way to the end as normal and uh, it's just one, uh, it's just uh, two um, single crochets right into the very end. Okay so do that and um, we're gonna start the ring which is what we've already know from before and uh, we'll begin to do that. We're almost done so just keep sticking to it. You're doing great. Okay so my edge is now done. It looks just like the original but it's only half and now we're gonna start filling in the tops of the stitch stop and roll. So now we're just going to start off with a slip uh, knot onto my hook and what we want to do is just go in like we did before into a post, a side of a post. 
and only stay on the top of the, the ring and what I need to do is just slip stitch. So just pull through and through and I'm just gonna continue to move myself through the roll all the way in doing a slip stitch. Okay and so I'm gonna do this for one complete row and then I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna get my other color. I think it's clay and I'm gonna do the same thing. So just all it is is slip stitching all the way around. So you're gonna then fasten off once you get to the other side and then we'll join another one and then that will conclude how to do one of these motifs completely. Okay my green is now in just like you see and now it's time to put in the clay and just quite easily. It's the same thing. This time we just have to play over top of the of the green. So just kind of moving up the same post and just attaching in and then just slip stitch that across and then just weave in your ends as well. So that's uh, pretty easy going and it just it just is a nice finishing touch and you just wanna be careful you got the right stitches in there and it's good to go. So please do that and when I come back I'll show you the final look of doing half motif and then we're gonna move on to how to join these and then do the final border after that. So this is what half a motif looks like. Thanks for joining me on this part of it. Now we're gonna move on to um, doing the joining and I'm gonna show you how to do the invisible seam and then we're gonna do the border next. So we're at the point of the tutorial where we're gonna sew the motifs together and you'll have all your motifs done and you'll do this as the, one of the last steps before doing the final border. You will notice that the seam line is absolutely fabulous. It's almost flaw flawless I wanna say because it's doing an invisible seam join and I'm gonna show you how to do that technique and what's happening here is that usually when you go to sew things together a lot of people make the idea that the darning needle has to go through both of the loops. But to do an invisible join such as this that you only go through the back loop when you're going to do it. So this is the right side facing up. So what we need to do is that when we go to do this is that we want to turn this afghan upside down so the motifs are facing down and we only want to sew into this back loop because the strings that you see here, see the lines? as you're seeing here, that's the front loop and the front loops kind of join together, not join together but they kind of just sit together making it very uh, flawless at the same time and when you really pull it apart it's only the back loops that are actually joined in behind. So you're gonna have your whole thing done. You might want to go to a kitchen table in order to do this but you can sew more than one seam together at the same time. So you would have another motif here. You could probably go up and then turn or go in this direction up to you. And you can just do it really strategically. So in order to do this effectively you need to turn the afghan upside down like so and you're going to see the loops. So front loops just say they're on the front side here and then the back loops are the outside string. And what we want to do is that because we have done this uh, excellently in the sense that we have followed the pattern is that this seam line will match exactly where it's about both of them will turn into a different direction. So let's uh, begin and I'm gonna show you how to sew them together and I'm gonna show you how to hide in your yarn tails as well. So I've grabbed my darning needle and I'm gonna use the same color to do the join so you'll never see it. And what I want to do is that I wanna come in to a very corner piece. Okay so I'm looking, see there's three in the, in the pumpkin here and so I'm looking for the two single crochets and I'm gonna, going to go in this direction so I'm looking for the single crochet. There's two of them in the same stitch. I'm looking for the one on this side. And I'm only gonna come into a back loop only. Okay so don't come into both of them and I want to just join and I want to come into the very first stitch on this side and into the back loop only. Okay and what I want to do is that on the other side of the string I put a slip knot and I'm going to insert the hook or the needle through the slip knot and I'm gonna pull everything together. And by doing so it locks itself into position. So what I want to do for the next few stitches is this is the straggler is that I'm going to move down the line so I go to the very next back loop that's available to me in the one side and then I come into the back loop that is on the next side. But before I put everything into place is that I want to hold down the straggler on top and what this will do is that this will go over top of that securing it into position. So I keep moving down going into the back loops on both sides of the motif only. Keeping that straggler into position 
and I only need to leave it for about an inch or so because I have done a slip knot is that it will stay in a position. It will not actually untangle itself or untie itself in the future. So once I'm comfortable that I've seen enough, I think it's in enough for myself. This is all I would leave it in for is that you can just safely just cut it out at this point. Like cut the remainder at this point. You can leave it to the end too. It's up to you. And you can just continually to move down catching the back loops only. So it's just starting is a little more awkward because you wanna hide in the tail the first time. And you're just gonna move all the way down. So when you get to the end of a side, if you have enough uh, string, uh, string on your needle, you can continue to turn. You don't have to stop and start in the middle, sorry, of the, of the, of the end. You can start in the middle too if you wanted to if you ran out of string. So don't think it's a waste if you don't finish off right on an edge. So I can just turn it over and check. See the other side? It's amazing. Right? So you have that beautiful seam line in there and everything will work out really quite nicely. And this is called the invisible uh, join. It doesn't say to do that in the pattern because a lot of people have their own techniques on how they like to sew things together and that this is my own personal preference because it looks so flawless at the same time. So I will show you how to finish off your yarn in the sense that um, what happens when you run out of string or you've at an edge and you need to stop. I also wanna share with you if for whatever reason you are off in the sense that you are one side is running out of stitches quicker than the other, you can always just fake it. And the reason, uh, for example, say this side looks a little shorter to me. It's not but it's just because I was tighter. But if it isn't, what happens is that you can just go across to a stitch that already has something and then just go for the next one. And what this will do is it will slightly pull it together and so you can run out of stitches faster on one side by doing that. So if you're matching it across from each other and one side is not balancing out properly, you can always just kind of fake it like that in that sense. So for example, say I wanted this side to end quicker. What I'll do is I'll go back across and then back into where this is coming out from and it, what it'll, it'll do is uh, shrink it by one stitch. And uh, it's, it's not noticeable. You don't wanna do it too often but um, if you, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So let's uh, review on how to finish off some yarn once you get all the way to a corner. You are going to stop on a corner. There's always two and every corner on the other side is going to be um, having two as well. You wanna make sure that you're ending so that all the stitches line up together. So to end a stitch what I would do is that I would just come in or to end one of these, come in and put it through the string to kind of tie it. It's almost self into a knot almost just like that and what I would do is run the yarn just like you were about to um, finish off a round and run the yarn underneath some fibers. Don't go to the other side because then it will pop up the other side. Go in one direction and then put the yarn back through the same direction through a different set of fibers so that it doesn't pop out and then run it through the other direction one more time. So you wanna go back three times and you're just lightly going under some fibers like so. Clean up your other side if anything did pop out on you like this and then what you can just do, I'm turning it over for the first time live on camera but there's the seam line there. So it's nice and flawless and we're gonna cover then how to do the border. So you're gonna put everything together, make sure everything lines up and it's perfect each and every time. So the border, let's review that next. We're gonna bring on our aqua here. This is matching the border that is already there and that is the color that we are going to go for. The final color is the green here on this particular color palette. So it says to join in any uh, single crochet in a corner. And so all we're going to do for this particular round is that we are going to put uh, it in. We're going to attach. We're going to chain one and we're going to put in one single crochet into that stitch plus we're gonna do one single crochet into every stitch going all the way around. But what's gonna happen when we get to where the motifs need to join together? 
right in here and what's gonna happen over here. Let me show you to, how to do that next. So I'm coming up close to where two motifs are going to join. Regardless if it's joining with these regulars when they're coming together on the outside or if it's actually um, right uh, with these half ones just like so it's gonna be the same thing. So it's wherever two motifs come together. You're gonna go right up into the edge just like so. Okay and then the next one you're gonna do two together. So just going right into the seam line area here and into the seam line area here and put two together and then that will complete that. Now with these here you just have to equally space them into your stitch work as you're going there. So there's really no borders but you just gotta look at everything. This is like a double crochet so there would probably be two there. This is a single crochet row here. This is a double crochet so it would probably be two there and all you're just gonna do is that you're gonna work yourself around and just equally space it. So if it sits down and you're seeing that this border here is starting to buckle or it's starting to pull and uh, ruining the tension of your afghan then you know that something's not right. So just carefully do this round especially in this uh, section here. Um, you've got some half double crochets. You have some single crochets. It's just a matter of just putting it in and making it look as close as you can to being absolutely flawless. So the next round I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So you're just gonna completely go around with single crochets for this one. So we're gonna just start on the final border. So let's just say that this has been completed here because the border is so simple I don't need to actually show you the whole thing is that we're just gonna start off anywhere. It doesn't matter where you start for this final round because it's all gonna be identical. So you don't need to worry about turning corners or anything like that and you've already got your border established when you're going over these half motifs. So basically it's really quite simple. So you're just gonna join chain one and then one single crochet into the same stitch. So to do this entire border you're going to chain three, one, two, three, skip one single crochet and single crochet into the next. And then you're gonna chain again. One, two, three, skip one single crochet, single crochet into the next. So one, two, three, skip one, single crochet in the next. And you're gonna go all the way around regardless of turning corners in the same fashion because you are doing it like this. When it goes to turn around corners it's going to keep itself balanced because you're adding extra chains in there and then in the flat edges it just looks like a really nice flare out from the border. And when you get all the way back around don't forget that when you have to join you have to chain three first and then just join it to the first single crochet and that would be how you would do the border. So the border is very very simple on this whole afghan. So in today's tutorial you learned how to do a full motif. You learned how to do a half motif. We covered on how to do the joining here and we also covered on how to do the border. I'd like to thank yarnspirations.com. They are the first company to ever approach me to do a professional design and do all the tech editing and the graphics in order to make this work. It's been an absolute pleasure. Six months worth of work behind the scenes in order to get it to you and they've provided to you for free as well. So that's it for now and, and join us uh, on Facebook. And if you have any uh, work in progress of this afghan or any other types of projects as seen on the crochet crowd or your inspirations we'd love to see your creativity. Don't ever forget to share. We love to see it. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochet crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Stay tuned next time for more free patterns and ideas. We'll see ya. Bye bye.